His name is life. Good morning and welcome to WCC on this Resurrection Sunday. Hear what Peter said, recorded in Acts 2. He said, listen to these words. This Jesus of Nazareth was a man attested to you by God with miracles, wonders, and signs. Though he was delivered up according to God's determined plan and foreknowledge, God raised him up, ending the pains of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by death. Please stand as you are able and celebrate our risen Savior. Corinthians 15. It says, Where, O death, is your victory? <clears throat> Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And please join us in Christ the Lord is risen today.
Please be seated. From Revelation 1, Jesus says, Don't be afraid. I am the first and the last and the living one. I was dead, but look, I am alive forever and ever. This is He Lives. singing about the risen Christ, and rightly so, but we must also do as he instructed us, to remember his broken body and shed blood. As we come to our time for communion, these are the words of Paul from Galatians 6. But as for me, I will never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. The world has been crucified to me through the cross, and I to the world. May peace come to all those who follow this standard. This is the old rugged cross. i 
Good morning. It's great to celebrate Easter with all of you this morning. Um, just some instructions before I start. Um, we have a, an extra communion station in the back. So we have five communion stations, two in the front, three in the back this morning. The communion is in a double stack cup uh, with the juice and the cracker stacked together. Um, so, and there's also a waste receptacle and uh, an offering plate at each station. So as uh, we prepare this morning for communion, I just wanted to uh, reflect on Jesus's life here on earth and then the significance of the resurrection that we celebrate today. While being raised from the dead was a miracle in itself, it was so much more in Christ's resurrection than that. It means so much more to us. So Jesus came to the earth as a vulnerable baby, growing up in a way no one else ever could, completely sinless. He spent his life teaching, preaching, and being a living example then, as planned all along, Christ gave his very life as a sacrifice for all, promising eternal life with God to all who believe and follow him. But he wasn't done with that. Christ was raised from the dead three days later, just as he said he would be, proving he is who he said he was, God in the flesh. His promises are true, and his sacrifice is for all. Jesus now sits at the right hand of God, waiting for the time to return. So today, on this Easter Sunday, as we celebrate Christ's resurrection, we have the opportunity to remember Jesus and the cracker and the juice that symbolize his sacrifice given to us. I'm going to read a passage that we read in our uh, elder study this last week that I thought kind of pertained. It's uh, 2 Colossians 13 through 15. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He, was take, he has taken it away, nailing it to the cross, and having disarmed the power and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. The gift of eternal life is one that no one can give except Jesus. But rest assured, he's already done this. He's already given it. Um, all we have to do is accept and follow him. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus um, as your Lord and Savior, please start the journey today. Submit your life to Jesus. He has the power to save and whose promises are true. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we gather today to celebrate your glory. We thank you for your love you have given for us that is beyond our comprehension. To send your son from the throne of heaven to this world knowing he would suffer and be put to death. But today we celebrate because Christ defeated death and gave us an invitation to be with you in your glory one day. So as we take the cracker and the juice, let our minds be set on you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
you have chosen to celebrate with us today. Here at WCC, we believe that church is about community, about connecting with each other in our pursuit of God. And the best way for each one of us to get connected is to fill out a connect card. These can be found in the seat back pockets in front of you. And at any time during our service, you can fill out your information as well as any prayer requests that you might have. Before you leave, please drop those in the black boxes at the back of this room labeled connection card. If you are a guest with us today, we are truly so happy to see you. In the back of this room is a guest services booth. There is somebody there to greet you, answer any questions, and to share a small gift with you. Before we get into today's message, here's what's happening at WCC. Our men's ministry is hosting their annual Battle Ready Conference, May 3rd and 4th. The theme is Handling Hard Better. If you have any questions or would like to sign up, please see the table in the back. In just a few short months, school will be out and summer will be here. The Mahoney Valley Summer Camp Schedule is out and registration is open. Please see their website for all of the details and don't forget to use the WCC discount code. Be sure to check your bulletins for more information about these events and more. You can also stay connected with us throughout the week by visiting our church website at wccin.org or by checking out our social media on Facebook or Instagram at Wilkinson Church of Christ. For the last three months, our pastor Tony has been taking us through an extensive, in-depth look at love. We've seen specific characteristics of God's love for us, of how we should show love to others and to ourselves. And we've seen countless examples of what love is and isn't. Today encapsulates it all because love changes everything. Once again, I wanna thank you for being with us and we hope you have a great week, Wilkinson. Good morning. He is risen. Aren't you glad for that this morning? I am so glad to have all of you here. And if you're visiting with us today with with your family, we just want to say welcome. We're glad you're here. If you're joining in with us online, we also want to say welcome. You're able to, to tune in for us to be able to come together to worship the risen King. That every single, I wouldn't even care if you just got up and raised hands and clapped, whatever you did today, because he is worthy. He is worthy. There's, there's the key. He is worthy. And if you are joining in with us today for the first time, we have been in a series since the beginning of this year of Love Is. We went through what Paul has to say in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, that love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it keeps no records of right or wrong. And today we're going to culminate that. God is so good that when I laid this out, this series that was for the purpose of love and our core value, unconditional love. And the reason I thought was behind it was because February would have been in there and that was love. But when I went through this, I saw that this series was ending on this day that we celebrate the resurrection. And I cannot think of a better way to close this series out than what we're celebrating today. And that is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and that is a powerful, the most powerful example and illustration of what love is. In fact, his love changes everything. Do you agree with that? Do you realize that if it was not for his love, we would not be here today? Let that soak in this Easter morning. If it were not for God's love, for everyone that was and that will be born and, and breathe until he returns now, as we're thinking, but, but if it was not for his love, we would not be here. Because it was in his love that he wanted to restore that relationship that had been lost from his creation. So therefore, if it was not for his love, there wouldn't be a Wilkinson Church of Christ today, and there would not be the church as we know it. Do you ever think and consider 
that. Why? Because God is love. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 8 tells us that very thing, that God is love. What that tells me is that everything that God is and everything that God does and everything that God has said is about love. God does nothing without love. That perfect love, we talked about that so much through the series, agape love, an unconditional, relational, intimate love that he has, that's, that's the love that he means. I can't help but to think, and I know since you've been, many of you grew up in, in Bible school and all, you know the whole story of Easter, and, and do you know that those women that went to the tomb that day, they were going out of love. But what was it they were anticipating in that love? I want to ask you that same question today. As you came here this morning, what is it that you're anticipating? Because every single one of us are on a journey, are we not, throughout life? Probably all throughout here that are filled with this in this auditorium today, there are different stages of growth in our Christian life. And let me tell you, you may be here this morning without having that personal relationship with Jesus. Let me first tell you, we love you and Jesus loves you. And we are glad that you're here to be with us this day. So along those journeys of growth, every one of us are anticipating something. What are you anticipating today? Were you anticipating coming here for, for worship and, and being able to take communion with your family? Or are, are you anticipating Jesus today? Here's the good thing. We get to celebrate, we do, every single week right here at Wilkinson Church of Christ. We celebrate resurrection every week. In fact, as believers, I, tend to, I want to know that we celebrate his resurrection every time that we do something together. As we do life, we're celebrating his resurrection But think of the anticipation of what those ladies that morning that were going to the tomb, they had love in their heart. Remember, their entire world had changed. Even though Jesus had told them who he was and what was going to happen, they loved him dearly, but their world had changed. I don't want to camp out on Friday because Friday's done. Sunday morning is here. But all that occurred on that Friday, and then Saturday was silent. Now there was this victorious display that he had done what he said he came to do. He overcame the sting of death. Praise be to God for that. And it was in his death that day. It was in his death. It was the shedding of his blood that allowed us to have the opportunity to be forgiven for our sin. And church, hear me when I tell you that it was in his resurrection that gave us the ability to have a new life. Praise God. And that's what he did. So their anticipation was taking those spices to to prepare this body for the one that they loved probably thinking, now what? What are we going to do now? And remember, Jesus had been telling them what was going to occur, but now they're going to get it. Even when they arrived to the tomb that morning and they see the, the, the stone that was rolled away, there's still some wondering. It really hadn't quite got to them yet. That stone was not rolled away so that Jesus could come out, Amen. That stone was rolled away so that mankind could go in and see the glory that had occurred. They were just about to see the the most complete expression of love, and that was the empty tomb. The empty tomb was love. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whosoever would believeth in him should what? Not perish, but have everlasting life. There is the evidence. Praise be to God that that tomb was empty. Amen? It gives new, clap, shout, praise. That's, you know, I don't, I, we could spend the whole message today praising him, and I'd be all right with that. How about you? Because why? Love changed everything. Love, as, as he knows it, is the most important thing. 
1 Corinthians 13, uh, the love chapter that I've encouraged you to read. The Apostle Paul reminds us at the end of that, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is, and the greatest expression of love was Jesus on the cross, spreading out his hands and his arms to die, but that wasn't the end of the story. It was to be buried in that cold, dark, dark, dark tomb that was carved out, fulfillment of prophecy, but not to stay there, to be raised on that third day. Oh, how he loves us. There's a song ringing in my head right now. How about you? Oh, how he loves you and me. And it's in all that he did. His love changed everything. Know where the love story began. It started with all of creation. Started with God who has always been and who always will be. And the expression of love, that restoration, right? Because if you have true love, do you believe that within true love, even when someone has harmed that relationship, there can be restoration? Do you believe that? Well, here's the restoration. That love that God had for his creation never left God. Did you know that? Mankind's love for him wavers, but God's love never wavers and it never changes. And we go back to see how great he loved us because we see in that love, the fact that love changed everything, Jesus loved as God in the flesh because God left all of his glory. Jesus, God in the flesh, laid aside the glory of heaven to come here to what? To get to the cross. And to endure what he went through. And then to be raised on the third day. Why? Because there had to be that perfect sacrifice. The perfect lamb of God had came into the world. And he now was, had shed his blood. Prophecy fulfilled. That is what sin and our debt required. And he did it. He left all of those things. In fact, I'm going to direct your attention this morning to Philippians. I'm going to give you multiple scriptures today, but I'm going to direct you to Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. I'm going to ask you to stand as I read from that this morning, if you have the ability to do that. So get through Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Then you get through Acts, Romans. Then you get through Galatians, Ephesians. You'll find Philippians. Philippians chapter 8. I love hearing those Bibles turn. Or Philippians chapter 2, I'm sorry. Here's what he says. Paul, is, as he's writing to the church in Philippi, he says, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion that make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, Being one in spirit and of one mind, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to others' interests, but to each of your own interests or the interests of others. In the relationship with one another, have the same mind as Christ, who, here it is, here's the expression of love, who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage, rather... Here's what, hear hear it, love changes everything. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness, and he found his appearance as a man, and he humbled himself even to death on the cross. Pray with me. Father God in heaven, we we just come together, and, and we know, we know that those that went to that tomb that day, the anticipation But their anticipation did not match the full scope of your love. Because it is your love that allowed that tomb to be empty that day for all of mankind. And for that we say, oh, how you love us. And we want to love you in return. So help us to be that people that love you in our words and our actions and our deeds. And just be completely submitted to you. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. And all God's people say it with me. Amen. Please, please have a seat. I'm going to ask you to get our minds around the scope of how his love changed everything. 
Imagine, if you will, that, that you own you own the most beautiful piece of, of uh, property here, here on this earth, right? I've been by many of your homes. You, you have beautiful, beautiful homes. But imagine you have the most beautiful place here on this earth, and you have everything that you would ever need there at your fingertips. And imagine that not only do you have it at your fingertips, right? You could be like Barry Fout, right, and have, have servants take, bring things to you, maybe fan you, eat grapes while you're tending to the cattle or something. But you've got servants all around you to tend to every single need that you could ever want. Imagine that you have complete command and complete authority over, over all of it. And then imagine that leaving you, 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 there's a leaving all of that beauty behind to go to the scummiest, the darkest, the deepest place ever away from there. You lose control of, of your comforts. You don't have those comforts anymore. And you forsake the, the command that you have. And you're willing to then subject yourself to authority and you're, to those really that are unloving that are and the ruthless with their authority. And even in that, you, you, that person, you have still have the ability to, to wipe out anybody, anyone that oppresses you. But you choose to restrain yourself and, and to accomplish something for a greater purpose, right? You leave behind all of the riches and you become clothed in poverty. You give up all of that and become poor. You literally move, remove yourself from being treated as a king to be subject to being treated like yesterday's trash. And here's the thing. You're not forced to do it. You do it willingly. And on top of that, you're doing it to go to people that maybe hate you. And you could bring complete destruction on those people. But you choose not to. You choose to sacrifice for their people, for their good, not for your own self, but for them. And here's the deal. They're not even going to recognize what you do for them. Right, we can kind of get our sense of that. How I many? Maybe somewhere along the way, you've helped somebody, and there didn't seem to be a reciprocation of that at all. And you thought, really, really? Maybe you didn't say anything, but if you're like me, there have been times when you thought it. I, I just really did that for you, and you can't even say thank you. In fact, you're they're rude to you in return. They don't appreciate it. They don't appreciate anything that you've done, the things that you've left behind. But yet, despise all of this, you are still willing to go through with all of that. You know what you're doing, and you're doing it, and you have nothing to gain out of it other than for the welfare of those that you're sacrificing for. Everybody else is going to gain except you. Jesus did that. Because love changes everything. Jesus laid aside the heavenly conveniences and he came to be with us so that there could be an opportunity for us to have treasures in heaven alongside of him. Praise God for that. Do you agree with that this morning? And if it were not for his coming, there would not be a death, a burial, and a resurrection of Jesus and then an ascension back to the heavenly father. And therefore, all there would be would be destruction destruction. But he laid all of that aside. He laid his crown aside, as we know, as we had looked at the cross on Friday for a a crown of thorns so that you and I could have a cross with him, a, a crown with him in heaven. How wonderful is that? That he was willing to leave the Father and all that he had so that he uh, could ascend. That meant that you and I could then be alongside of him for all of eternity. Praise God for that. That is the good news this morning that we ought to be anticipating. And it's in that message that there is good news. His gospel Because of the fact, the evidence shows that his love changed because Jesus died for us. We see that in 1 John 3 and 16. That this is how we know what what love is, that Jesus laid down his life for us. That, my friends, is agape love. 
unconditional, no strings attached. What have you done for me lately, love? It was done with the only, the only anticipation, right? There was hope from God the Father that, that his people would turn from their wicked ways and come to him. But the only anticipation from Jesus going through what he do is that he would be back in the glories of heaven at the right hand of the heavenly Father. This, my friends, is the love that John was talking about in John 3.16 and right here in this passage, 1 John 3.16. You can look them both up. We could really render that down as we read through that 1 John 3 and 16 passage of really boiling it down to how we can understand it, that this is how we know what pure and complete and self-sacrificing love looks like. Ladies and gentlemen, let me give you Jesus in the empty tomb. John Stott said it this way once. He said, quote, only one act of pure love, unblemished by any taint of ulterior motive, he says, has ever been performed in the history of the world, namely the self-giving of God and Christ on the cross for undeserving sinners. Laid down his life. That's important. Laid down his life. This shows that Jesus did not die against his will. Right? We, again, we're not going to camp out on Friday because that we're, that's done. Sometimes we, we want to do that, though. Maybe there's a trouble in your own walk. Maybe you're leaving him in the empty tomb. Don't do that. Don't leave him in the tomb. He's gotten out of it. You move forward with him as well. But that voluntariness is fulfillment of prophecy. You read through the scriptures on Friday and, and all that he endured, the carrying of his cross. They did not make Jesus carry his cross. He carried it to fulfill prophecy and carry out the will of the heavenly Father. They did not kill Jesus. He willingly gave himself up. And he did that and we see that he endured what he would endure that most people wouldn't have been able to endure for any amount of time in Jesus. And then to fulfill the prophecy, to fulfill the will of the Father, he said when he had stretched out his arms, endured all that he did, had bled all that he had bled, he said, it is finished. But now for the rest of the story. The fulfillment of prophecy that those women saw. The empty tomb. Can you imagine how they came to know that love changes everything? This shows the fact that he died for all of us when, and while we were sinners. Yet while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This shows the aspect of Jesus' love for us. I want you to take a moment and soak that in. Just say to yourself right now, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. He loves the person next to you. You may not feel very un able to be loved this morning. You may feel unloved. But let me tell you beyond a doubt, Jesus loves unconditionally. Love changes everything. And let it change all that you're going through. Because here's the, he loved you so much, he could, have, he could have not done that. He could have not went through that. He could have stayed in the glories of heaven without coming down here to this forsaken place, to a people that had rejected him and despised and rejected him. He could, have, he could have avoided all that scene at the cross. He could have avoided all that physical thing and all the emotional things that he went through. He could have avoided that cold, dark and cave, but he chose not to. Why? Because of you and because of me and because that relationship needed restored. Amen. Praise be to God. But there are times, even in that walk and journey, that Jesus was tempted to not to go through that. You've read all of that. But yet in the moment, he said what? Not my will, but, but your will be done. He resisted the temptation for self. Why? Because love changes everything. Because he had to give of his love. Isaiah chapter 5, and, or 53 and 3 or 6, prophesying of what was to come. Hundreds of years before it actually took place. He, Isaiah is referring to Jesus, he was despised and rejected by mankind, Jesus. A man of suffering, a man familiar with pain. Like one from people that hide their faces, he was despised and we held him in low esteem. He says, surely, 
Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, say it, we are healed. We all, like sheep, just have gone astray, each of one us turning to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. My friends, there's a love story. As only God could direct it. I have, on the Easter morning, I've spent time this morning of, of just in awe and amazement of, of how much he loves me. Maybe you're asking that question, Jesus, how much do you love me? The answer was when he stretched out his arms on that cross. I love you this much. Have your, grand, have your grandparent, that your grandkids that say, I love you this much. Jesus said, I love you this much, and he stretched out his hands and he died. That's the much. Love changes everything. And it's in that, the evidence of that is though we didn't deserve it, though we are sinners, he still loves us. And he is still loving you today. Look at Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. Very easy to get to if you're unfamiliar with it. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, then turn to Romans. So go back to Romans. Romans 5 and verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, what? Christ died for us. Colossians 1 and 21 says that because of our evil behavior and because we were once enemies of God, and by the way, if sin separates us from God, and if we are walking outside of a relationship with him, whether we want to hear it or not, we are enemies of God. But there's, a, there's, a, there's redemption to be had. Even though mankind had hated him, even though uh, uh, he still loved us, even in that hate, even when people weren't displaying it, even when the people before us and us now, as we're enemies, he still loves us. How cool is that? Isn't that a, a, a thing that tells you that love changes everything? His love doesn't change. Very important point for this morning's message. Ephesians 2 and 1 through 9 reminds us that although we were foolish and disobedient, God loved us. Even though we were living for worldly passions and pleasures, he loves us. We were dead, dead. But because of God's great love, remember love changes everything, we're able to have a new life. That's the great love of a great sacrifice. And here's the thing, we did nothing we did nothing to make him love us. Praise God for that, because I will fall well short of that. How about you? But yet he has loved us from the beginning. From the beginning. It's interesting to note that, it's, it, it, is, is that God's love for us doesn't get stronger when we become a Christian. Let that soak in. If you are here as a, as, and are not yet submitted to a relationship with Jesus, then understand he loves you as much as he does someone that has submitted to his life for him. His love doesn't start growing for you. It has always, always, always been there. Malachi 3 and 6 reminds us that God does not change. That means that his love does not change. Oh, there are certainly times when I'm sure that God is not pleased with me or you but that doesn't mean his love has changed. It does not when we disappoint him. Praise be to God for that mean that his love decreases. His love doesn't fluctuate like ours, like the, the tides in and out of the sea. It never changes. It's there always the same at any given time. That is an unbelievable aspect about God's love, that it doesn't grow and it does not weaken. It cannot. Why? Because it is the, full, it is the, the perfect of love, and it has always been at its full capacity. I remember when, when my son and, and my daughter were born, and looking down at those beautiful little faces. They didn't know me. Those faces had not, to, to their way, to, they had not known that they, they had not shown me love yet. But from the very moment that I saw those faces, 
I instantaneously and completely love them. I didn't grow to love them. I loved them from the beginning. It's at that moment that I got to see a glimpse of God. If you've ever looked in the face of a newborn baby, you see that in creation. A glimpse of God. And I'm going to tell you, as strong as my love was, is and was for my children at the time, it is way inferior to God's love for you and I because it doesn't change. Ephesians 3, 16 and 19 through there reminds us that Paul wanted everyone to know this love, this love from God that surpasses knowledge and surpasses understanding, and he wants us to get a hold of that vastness, even right here today at Wilkinson Church of Christ. And we see it in the death, the burial, and the resurrection. God's love is, is completely different than the world's. It doesn't waver. It doesn't, it doesn't fall. It doesn't fade. Even when people flow and when they disappoint and when we feel unlovable, you are not unlovable. Maybe, maybe today, maybe, maybe you're a mess. Maybe it's a circumstance of life that has you wandering and, and questioning the love. It's because you've been shown a perverted love. But let me reassure you today that God will never fall out of love with you. He will love you perfectly all the time. We've been shown what true love looks like. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. You and me, us, together. Love changed everything. Even us, fallible people that sometimes are afflicted, it's even in that affliction that he loves us. Lamentations 3. The Old Testament, if you want to turn back there, but if you want to mark it to read later, Lamentations 3, 19 through 26, you read about Jeremiah that was recounting the afflictions that he was going through. And it says that his soul was downcast. Maybe you're here today. Maybe deep down in your soul, maybe you are downcast because of a situation of life. Maybe you've been afflicted. And maybe you're wondering if God could, has, has forgotten you, left you out here all by yourself. You are not alone. He has never abandoned you, and he will never abandon you. In you. Take heart and draw strength from what you read from uh, uh, in Lamentations in Jeremiah and his life. Although Jeremiah was suffering in this affliction, he knew that God loved him. And he knew that because of the, the great love. He knew that he would not be consumed by his afflictions. Please go back and read that story. I don't have time for you to, or for us to read it today. But he knew that he had hope. He knew there was hope. Because he knew of God's compassion, and he knew that God does not fail. His mercies are new every single day. If you're in, if you're in that pattern of, of, of despair and affliction, quit looking to those around you and look to Jesus. He will never abandon you. He will never forsake you. He will always be with you. His love never changes. But you need to accept that truth. Just like Jeremiah knew of the truth. And that is that nothing, nothing can change his love for us. If it could, there would not be an empty tomb. But it cannot change, and there is an empty tomb. Praise be to God for that. Romans chapter 8, verses 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship, Paul says to those Christians in Rome, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. As is written, he said, for your sake we face death all day long, and we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, he says, no, in all of these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced, he says, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demon, nor the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Somebody say amen to that. You cannot be, say, he will not stop loving you. Worship team, you can work your way up front. The evidence that he will not stop loving you 
is by the fulfillment of the things that, he, that were said about him long ago. That he would be despised and rejected. That he would be punished. That he would be nailed to the cross. And not a single bone in his body would have been broken. It was not. But his blood was shed. And what drove those people to, to, to go look for him after, to go to the tomb? What drove, drove Joseph of Arimathea to, to go ask for the body so that it could be put into this cold, dark tomb? It was love. But a love to them that had a cap on it. But again, I give to you the empty tomb. Love changes everything. That death, that burial, that resurrection. My friends, that's the greatest expression of love. And do you know who that was for? You. And me. And the person sitting next to you. God is love. And he always will be love. That's why we're able to be here today. If it weren't for that love, we wouldn't even be able to be here today. That tomb is empty because love changed everything. Let that be your encouragement and your blessing. Let me just tell you that today, if you walked in here outside of a relationship today, let today be the day that you get to see the greatest love story ever told. And you be a chapter in his book on love. And you establish him as your king and savior for all of eternity. That's what Jesus wants. He wants you to come live with him in the glories of heaven forever. And it would not be possible had he not raised out of the tomb and ascended back into heaven. But today can be your day to confess him. Repent of your sins and be immersed in those waters of Christian baptism. We can do it right here on an Easter Sunday morning so that you can raise to be living the new life in him. But church, say with me this morning, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Stand together as you recognize that love changed everything. Oh
And all God's people say, amen. amen. I'm going to challenge everybody that's here today. Someone this week needs to know about Jesus. You be the vessel that takes that to them. And we've got breakfast here this morning afterwards. We invite you to stay and enjoy that. And uh, lots of stuff coming up. Russ's table's coming up on the 13th, so uh, keep that in mind. And uh, most of all, let's just keep celebrating the greatest love story ever told. Okay. Brian, are you praying us out? I am. Thank you. It's been good to be in the Lord, house of the Lord, hasn't it been? Amen. Bow your heads. Lord, we just love you and praise you. Just thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for the message. What a special day, Lord, that we, uh, we celebrate your resurrection, Lord. And uh, that's where we place our hope. Lord, we place our hope in that resurrection. And, uh, and we just thank you for the love you have for us, Lord. And we just um, pray that uh, you make us people a, a, able to share your love with those around us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. themselves and press on get it right otherwise get left behind yeah. some say he's given so